Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network and it's another new week. Today's topic is habits and I'm really excited to share this one. Uh, there's so much in our lives that is is really habitual and we don't even get to take a look at or we don't even recognize some of the patterns that we have ways of speaking to ourselves ways of being etc cetera, etc cetera. so it should be a fun conversation but before we get started <clears throat> let's just take a minute to settle in and get present so let's take a deep breath in through your nose Hold it and <clears throat> imagine all that oxygen just flowing right into your lungs and moving out into your bloodstream and enlivening every cell in your body. And as you exhale, exhale any tension in your back, in your neck, in your legs, in your arms, your shoulders. And take another deep breath in through your nose. Hold it and this time just visualize sparkling white light coursing through every molecule of your being and radiating out into the world beyond and then exhale any remaining tension and now let's just gently take our palms press them gently together and lightly 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 tickle your fingers against your palms so that it just gives you the little chill in your body and let's bring ourselves present right here right now so welcome great to see you this morning uh, I am excited to talk about habits because we know that habits can be made and broken and oftentimes we don't even realize that we are acting out of habit uh, rather than than truth like habit kind of puts us on autopilot and one of the things I want to talk about in terms of a habit is the habit of the way we speak to ourselves so when I was a lot younger I, I came from uh, what I call a dysfunctional family and there was a lot of really negative messaging and what I noticed when I went away to school to college was that um, my my family wasn't there to give me the negative messaging so I had internalized it and I spoke very negatively to myself and and I did that thinking that that was because it was true and what I realized and what I see in my clients often is that the fact that these this self-talk pattern is a habit and uh, looking to the past instead of looking to the future is a habit these are habits of thinking they're habits of being and we have the ability to transform those habits into something that is more life life affirming by creating and generating new habits and the way that we generate new habits is by first awareness and consciousness and practice and so rather than uh, buying into the notion that these negative patterns that we um, that we run are true or real we can recognize them as habits and just in that recognition alone it gives us a level of freedom to be able to say hey it's only a habit I don't have to make it any more real than that and I get to if this is a habit I get the opportunity to create other habits that are more beneficial to me and more life affirming so um, we have eating habits we have sleeping habits we have uh, self-care habits we have habits of thinking and being so um, I have had a client who uh, told me that she's been depressed for years and years and years and uh, what we were able to identify is there the habits of thinking and habits of self-talk that enabled that belief to stay in place and uh, one of the habits of self-talk was by saying I'm depressed like that's who I am and what we got to look at one of the ways to break a habit which is 
beliefs are also habitual. So she had this belief that she was, she was um, depressed. What we got to do is start teasing it apart and saying, are there any minutes of the day when you're not feeling depressed? You know, so that in and of itself to start observing what your what your pattern is throughout your days uh, when you're feeling depressed you can you feel depressed but nobody feels depressed every minute uh, so there are moments maybe moments that you're not aware of where you're not feeling depressed so then if that's the case then you can take that identity of being depressed as as, as an isness like I, this is the truth i am depressed as an identity and start teasing that apart and dismantling it because you get to start paying attention to other moments when you're not depressed when when maybe you're neutral or maybe you're angry or maybe you might even be happy for a moment or entertained or excited and um so the the idea of being depressed or the behavior of being depressed is or or the identity of it is a habit uh what else is a habit let's see um some people my mom my mom her day can't start until she has coffee so coffee can be a physical addiction but it can also be a very psychological addiction you know it's like i need to have my coffee it's a ritual and that you, we ha all have rituals some of the rituals may be powerful and and life affirming and some of the rituals may not be and we don't typically observe these rituals because we kind of go through life in um habitually in a lot of ways you know we just go on autopilot, get up, stumble to the kitchen, make the coffee, drink the coffee, sit down, um, read the paper, drink the coffee, whatever that pattern is. And I invite you to look at what is what it would feel like to identify a habit that you may have and then to allow yourself to try something different you know break a habit if you always sleep on the same side of the bed maybe try sleeping on the other side of the bed every now and then so that um, moving out of a habitual patterning and why would we do that well when we when we break it up a bit when we break it up a bit then there's more available to us in terms of creativity something's new so when you shake things up a little bit it makes room for new ideas it makes room for new experiences and uh, it also allows us to maybe see ourselves in a different light and um, just have a different context for experience so uh, trying different things opens us up to trying more different things so um, and the thing about habits is many times the habits that we've cultivated don't serve us now there may be really good habits um but the the and and cultivating good habits is a really great thing so for the same person who was talking about depress being depressed we started a creating a new habit of celebration and so the way you create new habits is by practice so for the celebration habit, uh, which is cultivating gratitude and appreciation and, and joy, um, what we had her do is uh, set an alarm on her phone for every hour or every couple hours where when the alarm rang, she would just jump up and celebrate something wonderful happening, even, even if it was something like I'm still breathing, you know, so I'm celebrating that I am breathing and I am, I am healthy, or I am celebrating that I can see, 
you know, even fundamental things that we take for granted all the time. So creating this habit of celebration um, is kind of a wonderful thing. And when you're busy celebrating, it's hard to, it's hard to uh, feel depressed. It's hard to feel a, a victim in the world when you're celebrating. And um, so that's kind of a fun thing you might want to try is, is create a new habit. So um, it could be uh, in, if celebrating isn't your thing or you don't feel inspired by that, you could create a declaration that's a, um, a reaffirming life affirming kind of declaration and uh, like I am invincible or something like that and you can put that on a timer and when you do it you want to get your whole body and being into it it's like I am invincible and feel it in your body and even if you feel ridiculous the first while that you're doing it what happens is that you're reprogramming your neuro network, you're pre reprogramming all the wiring in your being to be able to uh, stretch into this new experience of feeling. And um, what happens is you create new patterns and, and habits. And why not, why not create habits deliberately that we enjoy or that support us rather than being under the sway of habits that have unconsciously developed. So um, let's see, we talked about self-talk. Let's see, uh, habits of, of being can be even things like the way that we dress. So uh, I, I tend to want to simplify things for the way that I dress mostly. So I just, I just wear certain clothes over and over again and, um, or, or I have multiple versions of the same clothes. I'm not saying I wear my clothes every day and on and on and without washing them or anything, <laughs> but, um, what I'm, I'm saying for me, I simplified. That was a new habit for me was to simplify. And I can, you know, if I want to just shift things up, I'll wear something different, you know, something that is maybe m unlike me. Um, we can do all different kinds of things to shift our habits around. Maybe you always eat at the same time every day. That might be something to switch around or maybe you eat at all different times and and switching into mo eating at the same time every day would be a positive habit but but what if we got to design our habits what if we got to decide the habits that are going to serve us so for instance maybe um, getting up in the morning and getting on your phone and checking email might not be the best or most productive or supportive thing for you right away. Maybe there's a way to create another habit where you look at emails twice a day and only twice a day. And that way you don't get bogged down and caught up into that. And you can schedule that. And um, maybe that's a great habit to cultivate or a habit of meditation and finding the time to uh, incorporate this and actually what I see with a lot of folks is that the things that we schedule are the things that we consider must do's. And when it comes to the things that are for self care, those things go by the wayside because that we don't prioritize them as much as the other things in our lives. And we've all heard the um, the notion that on the plane, you know, get your oxygen mask first if there's an emergency so that then you're in a place to be able to serve others and help others. So uh, we want to do the same thing in our own lives. So if meditation is something that supports you and you want to create a new habit around that for yourself, 
prioritize that set that up so that you can do that first thing in the morning or that you do that at a certain time through the day but put it in your schedule as a priority as important as everything else or or anything else because if it's something that nurtures and nourishes you you need to be able to recharge your own batteries in order to make a difference in the world right so I'm wondering if any of you listening are thinking about habits that you have that you would like to change or new habits that you would like to develop you know what what kind of habits do you have that serve you and what kind of habits do you have that don't because certain habits can sort of suck the life out of you um, whereas the others are really life affirming like maybe maybe it's a habit to uh, eat in front of the television and if that's the case maybe there's room to uh, find something else you know maybe there's room to just really try having a meal with no other distraction and just be present to the food and what the activity is of consuming that food so I'm wondering for any of you listening or watching are there any habits that you have that really deeply serve you that um, you would like to share so or or really habits habits that you have never even recognized as habits before that you just thought well that's the way it is you know there are habits of the way we see things you know um, that's actually a really interesting thing to think about the way that we see things so it's a it's the question of half full half empty right if I, I um, I'm thinking about a time when uh, I was a lot more oppositional <laughs> than the, I was oppositional so if somebody said yes I said no and that was thankfully a long time ago but um, I was always looking for what didn't work or what was wrong or what didn't meet my expectations or what um, what didn't meet my standards whatever and noticing the things that don't work is a habit that is kind of a, dis a recipe for disappointment right if you're always looking at what's not working what should have been done different what should have been better that's kind of an unhappy place to be so what about looking at what does work and over the years I've cultivated the capability and and the perspective to look at what does work and now in pretty much any situation I have the the predisposition to be looking at what works and and how to even improve it more and that's different from saying what's wrong and I'm gonna fix it right there's a it's a different experience of being and feeling and and also creates very different interaction with people right instead of instead of being critical all the time there's room for appreciation and acknowledgement when when you can see what does work so how about you what do you what do you notice in your life that is a habit that you've cultivated that you've looked to really develop and how is that serving you because oftentimes I think what happens is that we become the victim of our habits in a way in that we don't have any control we don't exercise control we don't um, we don't we don't even realize the impact that those habits are having on us so because we don't see them so let's bring the invisible visible and bring our habits to the forefront and make choices we can choose we can consciously and deliberately choose the habits that we want to nurture and those that we want to transition out of 
And the first key to that is awareness. And um, then when we're wanting to institute new habits, we get to look at what is it that motivates us? What is it that would inspire us to create a new habit? And I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm talking about it as habit rather than discipline because discipline is where we oftentimes get mean with ourselves, right? It's like, I'm going to discipline you. I am going to beat you into submission. I am going to dominate and control you. Oftentimes when we talk about discipline versus um, creating a habit, uh, it, it feels different, right? Like if you are bad, you get disciplined. If you're creating a habit, you're just, you're learning something new. You know, you're creating a new pattern and it's a whole different feeling to it then I'm going to discipline myself into uh, doing something different, right? Habit is more of an invitation. So join me here. Tell me what is it, what kind of habit do you have that uh, you're looking to change or that you have changed and how has that impacted your life? How has it opened things up for you to um, create a new habit? Um, let's see, what else? I think, let, um, habits, we were talking about habits of seeing. So, habits of seeing, one of the things that I notice is that we often see by not seeing. So, we walk into a room and our attention goes to one thing and we don't see what else is in the room. Right? We're, or we're looking for something and we're scanning and just looking for that thing. And a habit of seeing that we might cultivate that could be really fun and enlivening would be to allow yourself to be present to the visuals and look around at what is there to be seen in such a way that you're not naming all those things as you're seeing them, but to notice maybe the colors in things instead of the objects, to notice the colors because we normally see things as objects and when we categorize things as objects, it enables us to just sort of um, say, okay, I've seen that, I, can, I cannot pay attention to it anymore. And the thing is that in naming things, it gives us a way to dismiss them. So I just invite you to try seeing differently. What would it be like to give yourself a few minutes to just look at the colors that you're surrounded by and notice them? And it will open up the experience of seeing the things very, very differently um, and create new perspectives. And again, why are we doing this? Because we're expanding our neural network. We're expanding our capability to, um, to experience life in a creative way. And what happens is that it becomes creative and it's generative and um, life is more exciting and inviting and interesting and alive. So I invite you to try that. Try an experiment with seeing differently or hearing differently, like listening for something different than you normally listen to, or there's always sounds all around us. And most of the time, what we need to do is kind of filter those sounds out. But what if you just took a minute and sat quietly and listened and heard all the different sounds around you, sounds of machi machinery, sounds of nature, sounds of people, sounds, whatever kinds of sounds there are, and experience that. And, and what happens when you do that is that it elevates your experience of your environment and shifts the state of being into, into a different place. And by gaining more flexibility in our states of being, our, cap our capacity for beingness expands and uh, our capacity for presence and awareness expands and 
that's what we're here for. At least that's what I believe we're here for is expansion and awareness. And um, so have fun with habits. That's the invitation for today. And I want to thank you so much for being here with me. Um, and I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I'm here every weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And this is Enlightened World Network that has wonderful, wonderful programming, all kinds of meditations, wonderful community of uh, spiritually oriented, heart-centered people that are sharing uh, wisdom and wit and lots and lots of love. So please check it out. And thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you saw today, please like it, literally like it and share it. And uh, let's just have wonderful conversations together. So blessings, lots of compassion and love to you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.